Well, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The final episode of Ken's Rage. Rao has killed, slaughtered, and maimed many people, including valuable heroes. He has bolo his way throughout the entirety of the country and now he has taken Yuria. It's time to settle this once and for all in Farewell Brother. The final Nanto master, Yuria, was kidnapped. Fudo of the mountains had also failed to defeat Rao. Was this the end? Had it all been in vain? No. Kenshiro's heart still beat with the spirit of his fallen comrades. To sacrifice everything for love. To make things right to bring peace to the world. And to honor the memory of his master, Kenshiro strode off with grim purpose in search of his brother. All the bloodshed and sacrifice had finally led to this. One last showdown with his brother and greatest rival, Rao. Kenshiro would show Rao the strength, the sorrow, and the hope that the chaos had brought him. He would show Rao what it meant to be the true heir to the Hokuto Shinken legacy. This would be their last battle. When today is done, it will all be over. It has been too long. The final chapter. Farewell, brother. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for not uploading this on Saturday, even though it's supposed to be Saturday, but something happened on Saturday that I had to change up things. And not to mention recording this also was a factor in the why this was uploaded on Sunday. Anyway, uh, this mission is actually pretty damn long in and of itself. So, to be perfectly blunt, you're just fighting mooks from point A to point B. There is going to be a certain part where things be a little bit different. And that's near the end. That certain point just happened to be near the end of the level. But until we get near the end of the level and the, and the fight with Rao, everything else is kind of going to drag due to the fact that you're going to be fighting nothing but mooks. So, while that happens, seeing as how there is one other person who has a uh, chapter in here, and it's also his last chapter, which is Rao. Um, I might as well tell you how Rao goes about this chapter. Rao's way to this chapter is shorter than Kenshiro's. He is already at the temple. He'll see he again. does not have to do much killing. Hope He's just Shinken going through to get to Kenshiro. That's it. He's already at the training ground. Wait for us. So We're basically speaking, Rao just have to kill a couple of mooks, and once he gets to Kenshiro, then, and only then, Will he actually have some sort of challenge? Because they'll throw every single mook, oh, every single kind of mook and boss at Rao's direction. Except for the flamethrowers. Because once again, those are specifically for Kachiro, and those are specifically for Salvor Stage. Now then. Kenshiro will have it tougher than Rao because the mooks here have all increased their uh, HP. Not to mention they've increased their defenses and their attack power. And of course, they will attack in droves with freaking crossbows. And let me be perfectly honest with you, there's one major complaint I've been having for Koei for years. 
and that naked complaint is, what the hell is their obsession with making crossbows the most powerful weapon in the goddamn game? Nah, seriously, what in the hell is their obsession with make? I wouldn't say most powerful weapon, but the most powerful enemies. What in the hell is their problem with making archers ungodly strong or ungodly annoying? It's kind of a pet peeve that I had with these guys. I mean, yeah, I understand archers are supposed to attack people, but you know what? With the Dynasty Warriors games that come out, even though I love Dynasty Warriors, my biggest complaint, and that is with this game too and Ninja Gaiden as well, the freaking archers are annoying. They either, and if there's a group of them, like say 30 of them, you'll be littered with arrows. They gotta have enough HP, otherwise I probably would be dead with the Hellstrom Arams that have been coming my way. Just who the hell do you think you are? Now, the only other thing I have against this is the fact that some of these crossbowmen have the audacity oh, to have a like rampage, not rampage, um. What was, what was that word that I'm looking for? Oh yeah, now I remember. Inspiration! Where he inspires the troops to keep fighting. But seriously, folks. In the Dynasty Warriors series, the archers have been the bane of everyone's existence. And in this game, there are no different. That's the only thing that I have against this. That's the major thing that I have against most Koei if they That's the only major thing I have against them. That's what I'm trying to say. The super bosses don't even get me up to be a problem. It's always the goddamn archers. And Fist of the North Star has a, has a pin chant of turning certain mooks who don't even fight or don't even rush you unless they charge attack you to turn them into archers who they could just sit back and just spam arrows at you for the entirety of the, in of the level and that can be really tedious and speaking of tedious you're not fighting just 25 I mean 30 no 35 mooks sorry no 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 you're actually fighting a total of 24 mooks which is a total of 60 mooks that's right the first, the very first uh, mission bonus of the game, you have to kill 60 mooks. And that's a lot of mooks to kill. Granted, you get an achievement for killing 5,000 with certain styles. I've gotten all but one achievement for that. No, actually, no, I got an all but two achievements. Because I didn't finish Dream Mode with Rao. And the only reason I didn't is because I did not have his horse. Which basically was the only thing that would allow me to beat his dream mode. But now that I do, I'm going to one day beat dream mode for round. But in the meantime, I probably will focus on other games. Because I have played this game over and over and over again, so I kinda got the hang of it and kinda got the gist of it, but more importantly, I have pretty much gotten everything that I possibly can to unlock the game. I'm almost at basically 100% for this game, so yes. That's the other thing I forgot to mention. The 100% does not consist of you getting all the mission bonuses. The mission bonuses only is there for to get you like higher skills or higher skill points, um, get you strength, get you defense, and more importantly, get you uh, what other things? Oh yeah, the ability to have more karma released. And the more karma being released, the more skill points you have. Which will also go towards resolve and ferocity. Or, or tenacity. 
that's basically all the mission bonuses are. So, they aren't even needed to complete, to get a 100% completion in this game. So that's basically what I pointed out, and if you excuse me, I forgot that my cat's in the room. I'll be right back. Sorry about that, now I'm back. And another thing, the different styles that you learn in your skills. It's easy, actually, to uh, get the 5,000 kills if other characters have that same skill as the character who has it by default. Say, like, for instance, Rao and Kenshiro, or Toki and some, well, actually, no, Rao and Kenshiro, because Toki has his own style. Um, or like, for instance, any of the Nanto fighters, like Rei, uh, Shin, and Souther. <laughs> and some of the special hurry. fighters Dare as well. Will make you pay. But, for Toki, he's the only one with Okuto Ujoken. Which, to be perfectly honest with you, once... One of the characters actually learned Okuto Ujoken's uh, style and equip it to them. They could probably kill more enemies than Toki, making it easier for Toki. So, yeah, I haven't completed the game because at the time I didn't unlock that for everyone else. And now that I've done that, I can whenever I want to complete this game and just put it to rest but for now the only thing I'm focusing on right now is the chapters and basically all I'm doing all I've been doing is fighting enemies and fighting some of the greatest battles and some of the most annoying battles in the entirety of the game I mean, the game's not bad. Sometimes there is parts where the action falls flat, and there's sometimes where people get really angry at the formula. Like, for instance, this area here, where you're fighting nothing but moves, and nothing interesting's happening. Or more of the times where you're doing escort missions and rescue missions. Otherwise, uh,. They had some innovative puzzles, and be perfectly honest with you, it, it, I mean, despite how I feel about some of the stages, and they aren't half bad. I mean, it is a post-apocalyptic world, what do you expect? And now I'm putting Awakening of the Senses to good use. Oh, and in case you're wondering why I'm beating the hell out of enemies, you see, I'm just uh, gaining my uh, spirit gauge up one way or the other. Because, once again, I did not find any water jugs. Well, earlier I did, but here I didn't. I probably won't fight any water ducks until I proceed further. But for the time being, just killing moves will get you spirit points. Oh wait, there's four more. God damn it, you bastards. You're just sitting there sniping me, aren't you? I hate it when they run, I really do. If they're gonna start a fight with me, god damn it, finish it off! Uh, gameplay wise, uh, real life, I, I probably would lose in a fight, because I'm not that good at fighting. But anyway, enough about that. Let's just go on ahead and. Oh, 
yeah, like I said, we could proceed further now. Oh, good. One, one spirit point. That's better than nothing, though. Let's see. Is there anything else here? Uh, oh. Health? That works. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I've already killed enough mooks. I have nothing to do right No, I'm not doing any more killing of mooks. Not until I actually have to. You guys are man or you guys are not mandatory, so you just stay right there. Besides, it'll take up forever to get to me anyway. Ooh, health! No, 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 at health, skill points. That's health! And that's what I need. Yay! Looks like we're nearing the end! Hey, there's still more! You want a piece of me, huh? Come on. Uh, I bring a message from Lord God Kendall. damn it, Bat. Wait you up ahead. Well, now we get to the fun part. Because now Kenshiro gets to ride Kokuo. Kokuo. Ken, what does this mean? Raul has sent him for me. Now then, Koko, um, Kokuo. Unlike driving a motorcycle, Kokuo will not explode. He can run into motorcycles. He is like a freaking tank. He can run over landmines. Yes, he can literally run over landmines and you will take no damage. He's like Epona from Majora's Mask. That is a goddamn big horse. Ah, it's Kokuo. Look out, and you can wholeheartedly see that Kokuo, if I haven't already mentioned it before, Kokuo's design is like red hairs from Dynasty Warriors. Yes, yeah, same design and same powerful force. This horse is freaking invincible. And to be perfectly honest with you, there's not that many things that's gonna knock you off of the horse. That is until Ken's Rage 2. And when I get to that, which Probably will be later on in 2.16. Uh, I'll explain the differences between Ken's Rage 1 and 2. But here, you can just enjoy mowing down troops with Koku. You will have to, however, get off your horse and beat the big guys. But, the miniature mooks? Not the miniature mooks, but the regular Mohawk mooks? You can just simply squash them flat. In fact, that's what Kinshiro does in the anime. Squash them flat with Kokoro. Yes, this is funny. This is hilarious because Kokoro can actually break through their guard and do damage to them. Dude, his aerial stomps can also hurt these guys. As you can see there. Hell, he can even stomp like a non-man elephant. So yeah, this thing's basically the Juggernaut. Oh damn it! You want a piece of me? Do ya? But yes, you want a piece of me? Do ya? We're here in the final stretch. We're, we're nearing the final stretch of the game. So, we're basically going to be using, if not Kokoro, some of our spirit in order for us to get through this level. Ah, there's one more left. Come here, stupid. Ah! You bitch! You think all this time I'd use the guard button, but no, no, pass me does not. And, booyah! Now then, let's tear through this area on a horse. Now normally, if you try to go through this on foot, it would be dangerous. Here's what I say to that. No, get back here Kokoro. No, Kokoro, stop, stop. Thank you horse. 
thankfully, you won't get knocked off your horse if a pillar lands on you. In fact... Okay, stop that, Kokoro. It, it, well, in fact, you'll just have to, uh... Deal with more mooks Where the hell did on the horseback. But what I was trying to say was, if a pillar actually fell down on you, then, unfortunately, ah, god damn it, stupid. What was I saying? Oh yeah. In fact, if a pillar actually fell on you, it, it, Kokoro would just shrug it off and keep going. That's what I was trying to say before I went on a random tangent, and I didn't mean to go on a random tangent. Uh, boy, that was close. Alright, now to get on to Kokoro. Right, let's make this jump. There we go. See, here's the thing. The training mode does not give you Kokoro. Yes, in fact, you have to literally cross through everything I just went through on foot. So, yeah. There's that. And, like I said, the training mode was literally, literally, the final level of the game. So that's basically the other big complaint that I have with this game. You're already spoiled to the final level of the game before you even play the game. So, yeah. It is good, but it has its problems. Yay, spirit. I could certainly use that. Damn it, stop that! Now I'll just kill each and every one of you. On horseback! Uh, chicken. There. Hey, hey, you. I was trying to lure him, but I guess I'm just gonna have to kill him off the horse. Come on, get up! And his heart stops. Oh, great, there's more of them now. Uh, time to whip out heavenly destruction. Or awakening of the sense is one of the two. This is basically the last mook rush of the game. And if you killed that one mook back there that was a mission bonus, these three jackoffs would be mission bonuses as well. Well, two out of three of them actually would be mission bonuses as well. Nonetheless, you are fighting three mid boss level characters at the same time. And all of them basically are Zeke's fighting style. Ah, uh, damn it. I thought I killed them. I guess I didn't. And die! Oh! Two out of three! Time to go for the hat trick. We'll kill that guy. Damn it! Didn't you hear the screams of the Now you die too! Now get up and think about what you've done! Oh! Matt, you must be hey, Rao. to this final battle. Uh let me kill this mook first. There we go. Now then, I'm gonna take your horse. Yeah, fuck your battle, I'm taking your horse. Oh, never mind. Fine, fine. It's not wanting me to leave. Sorry about that. I meant to say I almost stole his horse. I would have pawned it, too. Made some damn good money. Or probably got beans. Anyway, final battle time!
The Hokdo training field. You chose here. A fitting place to bury your bones and bring down the final curtain on the history of Hokdo Shinken. Rao, you will never rule this land. I will bury you here, along with your ambition. Perhaps what I really wanted was this chance to fight you. The greatest warrior of Hokuto will be destroyed by Rao. Kenjiro, return to dust. All right, Slugfest time, kitties, and Rao is already coming in inspired. We're in for one hell of a showdown because remember that move, uh, unconscious transmigration of the soul that Kenshiro learned in the last episode? Yeah, Ro has that too now. So now you're gonna have to use unconscious transmigration of the soul in order for you to keep from actually dying at the hands of an invincible Rao. Oh, yes. That is a bad thing. Oh, crap. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Now things are starting to heat up. As the temple itself is gaining power, it only gives you enough uh, spirit points in order for you to use Tensei Muso yourself so you can actually do damage to Rao. You see, Muso Tensei may be invincible to others, so long as they don't have it as well. Rao has it! And thankfully, I was a Tensei Muso before Rao's attack was successful. Okay, while he's backed off right here, I'm gonna grab this spirit point right here and start kicking some ass. This will be your definite help in order for you to defeat Rao. You're gonna have to take some hits though in order for you to recharge your uh, spirit points because Rao is definitely a one tough customer and he will slip in and out of Tensei Muso. I mean Muso Tensei. God damn it, I gotta say it right. But now comes the final part. He's going all out. Oh shit, that hurt. Now he's going to not only unleash his spirit, but also he will Oh crap. He both of the... Okay, what was I trying to say? The building is going to constantly keep collapsing. <coughs> Excuse me. And he will uh, use Muso Tensei on and off again. But you've got to be careful. Rao's aura will knock you back. Not to mention, every time... Rao's aura destroys a part of the stage. Stage hatches will come in. So yes, there are stage hazards in this battle too. And oh, I got caught by some very nasty stats. I lost my defense and my signature move was sealed. So I'm gonna have to wait till that happens and oh, wait till all these wear off in order for me to beat Rao now. So you've got to be careful when dealing with Rao. And one other thing that'll happen in his dying moment, he'll start unleashing tornadoes. If you walk anywhere near those tornadoes... <coughs> Sorry, something caught in my throat. But what I was saying was, if you walk anywhere near those tornadoes, you will be taking some serious damage. Ah, oh, crap. 
I, I think he's, he's just about dead, but... Pass me is going to do something that may piss off the audience. <clears throat> Screw up the final command action to finish him off. Not trying to, though, because it's pretty hard. Damn it! I almost had him, too! And, ladies and gentlemen, that's what you're gonna have to deal with with Harbinger of Death. <laughs> Rapid Fire Action Commands with, le with a smaller time limit. But nonetheless, I hopefully can beat this guy. Come on, man, don't screw up. Oh, you screwed up, you dumbass! <clears throat> But he's got little to no help, so the next hit will actually blow him away. God damn it, you idiot! Stop pressing the Y button when it says to press X! It's okay, it's okay. This will be the last time, hopefully. But nonetheless, Rao is a tough customer. This is one of the toughest battles in the game. And if you don't have the right skills, no, the right signature moves, Rao will destroy you! Oh shit! I'm in the yellow now! That's not good! I gotta finish this now! And this should finish him! With that, ladies and gentlemen, Rao has been defeated! And Fist of the North Star comes to an end! Woo! That was a tough-ass battle. So for now, enjoy the ending. Because it looks familiar, too. to hurt you at all. <laughs> Magnificent, my brother. Brother. Ken! Yuria, she's... Yuria! Your life will last for several more years. Spend what time you have wisely. Be happy with Kenshiro. Farewell, Kenshiro. My time here is over. I must be with Toki again. I am Ro. I need no help from anyone to return to the heavens. I have no regrets for the life I have lived. Rao, 
You were the greatest man I ever faced. This wasteland of violence. Only through fear could it be successfully ruled. But a rule based on fear can never bring true peace. Rao brought unity to this land, but I think that he had hope that he would one day be replaced by one who knew love. I like to think that that was the case. Raoul, rest in peace with Toki. I will not forget you as I live my life as the successor of Hokuto Shinkin. And that is the end of Fist of the North Star, Ken's Rage. My final thoughts on Kid's Rage... Well... It is a good first start. I'm not gonna lie, with all the criticism that many of the reviewers give this game, it is a good first start and it's pretty underrated. I mean... Granted, sometimes it does drag. Sometimes you have your problems with loops, and there are some bosses that are annoying as hell, but other times, this game definitely knows how to bring out some epic boss battles. Granted, Shin's the easiest boss in the entirety of the game. It still was a memorable battle. The battle we just had just now was memorable. Some of the moments in Fist of the North Star, Kenton's Rage, I mean... It still were epic in their own right. There are some bosses you can make as a, a complete joke, and there are other bosses that you could just waylay on there are some bosses that will more than likely cause you to die a couple of times. But still, despite the difficulty curve of the uh, game, it still had some of its major problems, I've already addressed them, and one of the biggest ones happened to be Cassandra and the Archers. But still, Cassandra would be the biggest problem out of the whole entire game, because having a glitch left in that keep people from completing the game will more than likely anger a lot of our viewers. Oh yeah, and also Fudo, yeah. Getting your ass kicked by Fudo would also anger reviewers as well. But nonetheless, this has been a pretty good uh, game, and to be perfectly honest with you, it's so good that like I said, I almost 100%ed it. Now, one day I'll have to 100% it. But in the meantime, I will actually focus on the next season which happens to be Urban Rain. See you guys next Saturday for that.